Hi, welcome to this Corporate Maths video on solving trigonometric equations. This video is an introduction to solving trig equations and it's going to be focusing on how to use the cast diagram. Now, there's a few different ways to solve trig equations, such as using the graphs um, or just learning it off by heart. Um, however, I'm a fan of the cast diagram. It's a method that I used in school and I, I like it. So I'm going to use uh, this video and the next two videos to show you how to solve trig equations by using the cast diagram. So first of all, we're going to look at the trig equation sine x equals 0.5. Now you may you may know from exact trig values that the sine of 30 is equal to 0.5 or if you didn't know off by heart or if it wasn't such a nice one um, you could do it on your calculator do the inverse sine of 0.5 and you would get 30 degrees now if we look at the sine graph you may notice that from the sine graph whenever we look at 0.5 here 30 degrees wouldn't be the only solution. You can see 30 degrees would be a solution, but then there's another solution over here. And actually, if we carried on the graph, there'd be more solutions as we go along. So whenever we're solving trigonometric equations, we've got to be quite careful whenever we get our answers because there won't just be necessarily one answer. There might be multiple answers, and we have to make sure that we get all of them. To do that, we're going to use a thing called the cast diagram. So we're going to start off by looking at this diagram here. Okay, and this forms the basis of the cast diagram. We've got our four quadrants. So we're starting off here at zero degrees. And if we go around anti-clockwise, 90 degrees would be here, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and back around to 360. And if you actually wanted to carry on, we could go to 450 degrees, 540, and so on. So you could just keep on going around. Um, you can also have negative degrees, so you negative angles. So go that would be going around clockwise, and we'll talk about that in another video. Okay, so first of all, we're going to look at how to show an angle on this cast diagram. So let's show the angle 30 degrees. So we've got zero here. We're going to go around to 30 degrees. So a 30 degree angle would look something like this, where you would go up to here and the angle in there would be 30 degrees and it's the angles are always measured from um this line here from where the zero is here okay so the beginning of the first quadrant here okay so we go around that's 30 degrees our next question is to show 170 degrees on the cast diagram so 170 degrees we would start at zero we go around to here to where 170 degrees so 170 degrees as a sketch would look something like that 170 degrees and our next question is to show 300 degrees on the cast diagram so we're going to start at zero we're going to go around to 300 degrees so it'll be 30 degrees beyond the 270 so around about there remember these are just sketches and we will mark in our 300 degree angle like so and that is the angle, that are the angle shown on the diagram. Okay, now let's have a look and see why the cast diagram is called the cast diagram and how it's useful in solving trig equations. So let's first of all look at the y equals sine x graph. So here we've got the y equals sine x graph starting at zero, zero, uh, going up to one at 90 degrees, zero at 180 degrees, negative one at 270 degrees, zero at 360, and so on. I'll just repeat. And let's have a look at uh, each of the, let's have a look at the values of y for each value of x. So for our angle, Angles between 0 and 90 degrees so our acute angles who so are you know going from 0 to 90 our acute angles as you can see whenever we work out the sign of those angles we always get a positive answer so any of these uh, values between 0 and 90 degrees we will get a positive answer so it'll be positive for our sine graph for angles that are between 90 and 180 degrees so our uh, obtuse angles they're going to be positive as well because obviously if you do the sine of 150 you get 0.5 and so on so all those values for sine x are positive so we're going to write positive in this quadrant between 90 and 180 degrees. For our reflex angles, well, all reflex angles between 180 and 360, for reflex angles between those values, they're all going to be negative. So they're going to be negative here. So angles between 180 degrees and 270, and angles between 270 and 360 are negative as well. So for the y equals sine x, or for sine x, uh, our angles between 0 and 90, we're positive between 90 and 180 are positive sine of angles between 180 and 270 are negative and between 270 and 360 are negative let's have a look now at the cos graph so y equals cos x between our acute angles between 0 and 90 degrees well they're positive so they're positive between 90 and 180 degrees well they're going to be negative between 180 and 270 they're negative and for uh, angles between 270 and 360, the cause of those angles will be positive. 
okay? And finally, the tan graph. If we look at the tan graph, y equals tan x, if we work out the tan of angles between 0 and 90, obviously 90 is an asymptote, but if we do the tan of angles between 0 and 90, they're going to be positive. And if you notice, all first quadrant angles are positive whenever you work out the sine, the cos, or the tan of them. Um, angles between 90 and 180 degrees are negative for tan. Between 180 and 270 are positive for tan. And between uh, 270 and 360, they are negative for tan. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a look at that. So putting that into one diagram, the sine, the cos, and the tan were all positive between naught and 90 degrees. So that quadrant we're gonna call A. In this quadrant, so angles between 90 and 180 degrees, when we work out the sine, the cos, and the tan of those angles, only the sine um, of those angles are positive. So in this quadrant, we'll call that quadrant S. Angles between 180 degrees and 270 degrees, when you work out the sine, the cos, and the tan of those angles, only the tan of those angles will be positive. So we're going to call this quadrant T. And this last quadrant here, whenever for angles between 270 and 360, whenever you work out the sine, the cos, and the tan of those angles, only the cos of those angles are positive. So we're going to call that quadrant C. So there we've got our C. A S T, and that is your cast diagram. Just remember that the A goes into the first quadrant, so A S T and the C there. Okay, so that's the cast diagram. Now it's really useful for working out or to helping you solve trig equations. And let's have a look and see why. Now let's have a look at that first question we started the video with: sine x equals 0.5. And we're going to have a look and see why or how the cast diagram would be useful in solving that question. So as you can see, we've got the sine graph here, and what I've done is I've shown where the graph equals 0.5 and also minus 0. Point, or negative 0.5 because that's going to be quite useful whenever using the cast diagram also. So we've got here, uh, obviously we know the sine of 30 is 0 0.5, so 30 degrees would be one of the angles. Now the next one would be 150 degrees, uh, because if you take 30 away from 80, you will get back to the other location where the sine x is equal to 0 0.5. So whatever that angle is at 30, if you take it away from 180, you'll get the other value there on the sine graph. Now, interesting, I'm just going to identify where these two angles are as well, where sine x is equal to negative 0.5. So this one, it's another 30 degrees past 180, so that would be 210 degrees. And this angle here would be 30 before 360, so if we take 30 away from that, we'll get 330 degrees. Now, obviously, the answer to this question would be, if we were asked to solve this question for angles between 0 and 360 degrees, our answers would be 30 degrees and 150 degrees. But I've just shown the negative angles on the diagram just to show you how that sort of links in with the cast diagram. So as you can see here, we've got a cast diagram here and we've got our first angle, our first solution was 30 degrees. So let's just have a look at that on the cast diagram. So our first angle here is equal to 30 degrees and that is one of our solutions. And we know that because we're looking for whenever sine x is 0.5 and that's positive and A, all are positive in this quadrant. So that would be one of our solutions. Our next angle, well our next angle is this angle here, which is 150 degrees. Um, I actually show it by just putting a 30 degrees in here because I know that it's 30 degrees before 180 degrees. So that's going to be 150 degrees. And again, the, it's S, so that means the sign is positive. So yeah, that's one of our solutions. Our next angle, now this wasn't a solution, but I'm just going to show it because it was a key one on our diagram, was 210. And I just show that by putting in another 30 degrees there, and that's 210. If we start from zero, 210 degrees. Um, now, only the tan's positive in that quadrant, so that's not one of our solutions. And our last angle of interest is this one, our negative 0.5. The sine of 330 is equal to negative 0.5, so I'm just going to put 30 degrees there because 330 degrees would be that angle there. But that wasn't one of our solutions because we wanted to find whenever sine x was positive 0.5. And that's it. So this cast diagram can be very useful in solving these trig equations. Let's have a look at a question now and see how we can use it without having to draw the, the trig graph. Um, and this can be particularly useful because if we were asked to find it between 0 and 720 degrees, we could just go around the diagram again. OK, so let's have a look at our next question. So our next question is to solve tan x equals 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the angles or the angles of interest onto the cast diagram straight away. Okay, so I'm going to put in the lines like so. 
rather than drawing the time graph. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find this first angle here. And to find this first angle, we're just going to do the inverse uh, tan or the arc tan of one, and that is equal to 45 degrees. So this angle is 45 degrees. Over our angles of interest then would be this angle here, 45, if we put that in, which would be 135 degrees. It's 45 degrees before 180. This angle here, which is 45 degrees after 180, which would be 225 degrees. And this angle here, which is four, put 45 in there, which would be 315 uh, degrees. So they're all angles which would be either one or negative one whenever you work out the tan of them, okay? Um, so we want to find the angles which we give, uh, whenever we do the tan of it, we should give positive one. So let's have a look at our cast diagram. So in our first quadrant, all of the angles are positive, so tan is positive here. If you do the tan of 45 degrees, you get a positive answer. So our first answer will be 45 degrees. So that's our first answer, x equals 45 degrees. Or if we carry on round, now in this quadrant, only the sign is positive, where we're wanting an answer of one, which is positive, but only sign's positive, so that wouldn't give us a solution. If we carry on round, this one, this quadrant, the third quadrant, uh, tan is positive, so that will give us a solution here. So we want to find what this angle is. So we're going to start from zero, and we're going to go round to 180, and then add on another 45, would be 225. So our next solution would be 225 degrees. And then our last quadrant, I always check check only the cause is positive here obviously this is tan so that won't give us a solution and that's it so if we wanted to find the solutions or the angles to tan x equals 1 um, our values for x would be 45 degrees or 225 degrees so the cast diagram has just given us a way to solve that really quickly and simply without having a look at the graphs if we do look at the graphs as you can see our values of 1 would be here at 45 degrees and our next one would be over here at 225 degrees so you can sort of check with the diagram if you if you want to but as you use the cast diagram over and over and over again you can just solve the equations the trig equations so quickly and simply okay now last question is to solve cos x equals 0.9 and we'll solve it for angles between 0 and 360 degrees so first of all what i'm going to do is i'm going to work out the arc cos or the inverse cos of 0.9 so that'll tell us the angle obviously in the first quadrant so whenever we do that we get 25.84 and so on. I'm just going to use it to one decimal place in this question. So I'm going to go for 25.8 degrees. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to mark that on the cast diagram. So let's mark that in for all of the quadrants, the angle of 25.8. Okay, so obviously we want the first angle of 25.8 degrees. The next one obviously is going to be 25.8 eight degrees before 180 degrees, 25.8 degrees after 180 degrees, and 25.8 degrees before 360. And they will be the angles that are either 0 0.9 or negative 0 0.9, and whenever we work out the cause of that angle, or those angles. Okay, so we want to find that whenever it's positive, so obviously it's 0 0.9, so it's positive. So if you have a look here, let's take the quadrants, which would be a give us a positive answer whenever we work out the cause of the angles. So positive in the first quadrant, because they're all positive. The sec uh, second quadrant, only S is positive, sign's positive, so no, no, and yes. So our solutions would be x is equal to 25.8 degrees. Obviously that's rounded uh, to one decimal place. And finally this angle here which is 360 subtract 200, uh, sorry 360 subtract 25.8. Obviously if we go around we want the size of that angle which should be 300 and 34.2 degrees and they obviously that's rounded as well and there will be our two solutions and it likewise if you look at the cos graph you'll see that 25.8 will be roughly 0.9 and this angle here of 334.2 uh, was also 0.9 Okay, so that's just an introduction to the cast diagram and how it can be quite useful to solve trig equations. Now to have a look at the next video, which is solving trigonometric, uh, trigonometric equations one and tr uh, then the following video, solving trigonometric equations two. And those two videos will sort of show you some typical questions on how the cast diagram can be used really quickly to solve them.